My next guest takes on Quo Ho Kwok at UFC Fight Night 99 coming up here on November 19th. Brett Johns joins me here on the program. Brett, how's it going? Yeah, very well. Just uh, just chuffed the bits, really. Just really happy. I, I can imagine, man. And uh, let's talk about this. Uh, you got the UFC deal. Congratulations on that, man. Uh, if anyone saw the video that's been floating around social media of where you found out that you got the UFC contract, very emotional. How much did this mean to you getting the UFC contract? Yeah, like like I said, I've um, you know, I don't want to say the sob story, but I've I've uh, I've struggled quite a bit in this game, um, trying to get where I want to go and. Um, Coming from a nation where um, not a lot of fighters have come from, it's been very difficult, you know. So, um, you know, I've, I've kept on trying to get the right fights and keep winning and not try not to lose. And, uh, yeah, it's, just, um, it's come about now and we got, well, two weeks today, we got the, the chance to fight now. Yeah, absolutely. And, and how long was this uh, UFC deal in the works? Was, was this like a total surprise or was this something you felt was close? Oh, no, it was uh, completely out of the blue. Um, I, I, well, to be honest, I was... Uh, I was trying to lose a bit of weight uh, for a K1 fight I wanted to do. So, um, yeah, I got my weight. I started getting my weight down, and then I, I woke up one morning, and there was, like, uh, back in the UK, the, the, our, our cell phones, the, the, they, they begin with 07, something, something, something. And um, I, this one was, like, 1-555-4. So I, I knew it was, like, a state's number, you know. So um, I answered it with a... Well, I wasn't sure who it was, to be honest, because it was 4 in the morning where we were, but... Um, it was my manager, and he said, "Oh, look, you know, potentially there could be a fight, but you know, potentially it's happened six times before, so I, I, I won't really get my hopes up, you know." And um, yeah, it turns out then he said, "Look, you know, you'll know for definite by the next day." So uh, I was in the middle of a gr- grapple with one of my main training partners, who's um, who's actually found an EBI coming up now, uh, the Eddie Bravo Invitational, and um, my coach called me off the mat, and he said. Uh, he said, oh, this is a Skype call with Brian Butler, your manager. And I went, all oh, right, okay, so we went to see Brian last where he delivered the news. And yeah, like I said, it's, it's, um, it's, it's been a long road. Like, and we're finally here. And now people say, oh, look, it's amazing, whatever. But like now the, now the work really, really starts now, you know? Yeah, that definitely, absolutely. And uh, your manager there, Brian Butler, that's, uh, that's great to hear that he was able to, to kind of hook all this up. Um, who was the first person you told about the news that you'd been signed to the UFC? I know there was a buddy of yours in the video, but uh, aside from him, who was uh, someone else that uh, was able to, uh, that you were kind of share the news with? Yeah, well, I, to be honest, I didn't want to tell too many people because obviously I didn't, I didn't need it going online. So um, I told my, um, my, my family and my girlfriend and that. My, but the guy in the video is actually my coach. He's my main coach and he... Um, you know, we, we got a really close relationship, so obviously he was the first one to know. But, um, yeah, my, my family, my, my mother, my, my girlfriend, my father. So, yeah, you know, everybody was over the, over the moon. To be honest, the response has been absolutely surreal, like, you know. And um, not only in Wales, it's, not as, it's obviously not as big as uh, most of the states in America, you know. And um, you know, there's people up from North Wales where there's not nothing much than, more than football, you know. And, they, and they're messaging me and they're like, you know, yeah, you know, well done. This is amazing news. So I've got the support there, and uh, we're looking forward to bringing, bringing them all out in, um, on November 19th in Belfast. You mentioned the positive feedback. What was one message uh, congratulating you on the UFC deal that kind of stood out the most? Uh, it could be like a coach, a family member. Was there one that sort of stood out? Um, not so much stood out. Everybody's was like, was absolutely crazy. But I know that um, Michael Bisbin put something up on his Twitter feed. Uh, for for Lee Herrick put something up as well, so that was that was all cool. And bearing in mind that James, I'm an absolutely massive fan of the UFC. You know, um, when I was in school, and also I'm not saying I did, I was bullied or I, I never really had much like friends. Like you know, I had friends in school, but not many. And um, I spent every, most dinner times in my in my um, my last two years in school just watching UFC videos and trying to make it become a reality. And uh, you know, now you, you you fast forward a good like I think it's like something silly like eight years and then now the short has come and uh, like I said you know it's just um, it's just absolutely surreal and so how people like Michael Bisman just say you know he, he just said look you know you can understand the emotion of, of, of a fighter you know like I said I've been in this game and I've been a I've been a very very poor fighter in this game you know and uh, there's a lot of fighters that are mind I'm not trying to give a sob story but um you know, uh, a lot of fighters as well, they, they say that they, you know, I live in a gym, but they, they spend six to seven hours in the gym. I literally lived in a gym. But I couldn't afford a bus ticket to get back to my, 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 my own house, like, you know. So the struggle, the struggle has been uh, a bit hard, very hard. You know, I've had times where I've wanted to stop, uh, but lucky I've got a very, 
positive uh, family around me that kept me on track, and uh, I'm thankful for them today. Yeah, and let's talk about that. I mean, you've had uh, injuries. I know uh, you haven't fought since uh, July 2015. Uh, from what I remember, the fight against Anthony Gutierrez and Titan FC, it's, it's, that, that was a fight that was a very long time ago. Um, for those who don't know, what were the injuries that have kind of kept you out of action? Um, well, in the Gutierrez fight, like I said, uh, it was like, obviously, uh, we had the problems with the weight cut out there and uh, uh, bad knee injury. I was in a heel hook and I uh, rolled the wrong way and my knee popped. So that kind of took me away from all, all the, the, the cardio based stuff, like running and stuff, you know, which I didn't really think was a big factor, to be honest, but it obviously is. Um, then, then straight after the, the fight, I was out for a few months with the knee. Didn't have any surgery, just to kind of let it re- rehab it and it, it kind of, it's not, it's not, it's not strong, but it's it's okay. You know, I get to spar with it and stuff. And um, um, during all that time with Gutierrez and Wild Watson, and my um, my shoulder and sparring kept on popping out. There was like a, it was a thing I couldn't stop. You know, and I, I tried to ignore it, but the more I ignored it, the more it happened. Uh, then we were lined up to fight Ricky Simone's in in March, and um, that fight couldn't happen obviously because of the shoulder. The shoulder, I had a really bad um, day where it came out twice in one day, and it was horrific. Then we decided to. Um, to obviously go under the knife and get it all fixed, and uh, you know, I, I, my own frustration. I, I've trained like a like a champion since day one, and um, you know, it was hard to sit down and watch guys train while I was sitting there in a in a sling waiting for my time. Um, but like I said, you know, it, it was it was worth it. Two weeks after after the operation, I was in the gym just working on my jab. So you know, it wasn't um, wasn't long before I was back in the gym. Uh, I did go heavy. I went really heavy. I think I went up to like 170. You know, and that's, that's, that's a bit too heavy for a 135, in my opinion. And um, yeah, you know, it's um, we're coming back now. And like I said, we had that K1 fight all scheduled, and I was trying to lose a bit of weight. So yeah, I'm feeling really good. Two weeks out now, I'm looking good, and I'm feeling really uh, feeling really positive and ready to go. And, you know, injuries can be very taxing mentally. You talked a bit about your family, you know, kind of being there as a good support system. How much did you need to rely on them? Because uh, I know when you're sitting on the sidelines, you're injured, you can't train, uh, your mind sort of, sort of starts to play tricks on you. Um, you know, how going through that, do you feel like that's made you a stronger fighter? Oh, definitely. You know, um, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm very lucky to have the family I got and the girlfriend I got and the team I got, you know. And, um, yeah, it, it, it is, you know, I... Through that time where I was injured as well, I didn't have money. I, you know, I, I don't work. I train full time, you know, and um, it, it was just so difficult to try and keep positive through a really dark time. And it was a dark time, you know, where I took my mind off fighting completely. I was out the, I was out the game. I was still training every day, but I was completely mentally, I was not there, like you know. And um, it's taken me a few months to get that fire back. But like, like I said, you know, I've always been that guy who's always trained like a champion. So regardless of how I felt, if I felt like you know, I didn't want to train, or if I really wanted to train, or if I had the fight, if I didn't have the, have the fire, I still I still trained like a champion, you know? And you mentioned that you were going to fight for K1 after this. I uh, had the UFC deal not materialized. Was there any plans at all to go back and fight for Titan FC? Because I see they've kind of moved on and done their own sort of interim uh, or, or vacant bantamweight title pitcher right now coming up on their next card. Yeah, no, um, we, we were actually scheduled to fight on the, um, the 29th of October for Titan. Um, but then, but then Hurricane Matthew decided to show up and, oh, uh, kind, right. of, and kind of put a stop to that. Um, and yeah, like I said, you know, we were, we were all getting. Well, I was getting ready for that fight, if I'm honest, with my with getting the weight down. And um, and then uh, the next show they said was uh, December the second. But I had I I had some corner issues. My 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 MA coach was out actually cornering one of my, my main training partners in EBI. So uh, that let, let 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 me on the sideline a little bit. So I needed to do some K1 just doing some little bit of money so I could kind of live that extra few months and then um, yeah we I set everything up and then the the UFC decided to call so I, I kind of put a stop to that as well. Let's talk about your UFC debut you're taking on Quan Ho Kwok who's also making his UFC debut how do you think you match up against him? Yeah you know uh, I, th- I think Quan's a you can see a very explosive fight uh, you know I, I'm, I'm not too sure I'm not sure if this is right but I think he trains with the, um, the Korean zombie I'm not really too sure but um, yeah, you know he's going to have that um, um, bit out, like crazy little um, striking style of his. Uh, the grappling, I see the grappling definitely in my favour. Um, obviously, that's not to say that he can't do anything to me. You know, obviously he's a very good guy, talented guy. So the grappling, I, I feel like favours favours with me. The striking, maybe him. But I think Quan's one of Quan's biggest weaknesses is is the wrestle, and um, that's one of my strengths. So um, you know, that's not to say I'm going to go out there and try and 
you know, try and like take them straight off the back because that, that's not the case, you know. Uh, like I said, people haven't seen me fight MMA for almost well over a year and a half now, and um, I've been fighting K1 and I've been training K1 for a long time now just to get my my stand up up to scratch. Like I I, I do stand up to try and cope on the feet, not to try and knock people out, but that's not to say that I haven't got the power there, you know. Who are some of the people helping you get ready for this fight? Like I said, my 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 team is is full of amateurs, full of. Uh, up and coming amateurs, but these amateurs are better than some of them pros out there. And like I said, you know, people tell people tell me every day. So you know, you've made the UFC now. Are you looking to change camps? Like the guys in the gym, these 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 amateurs coming through the ranks. You know, they they they, they kick my butt, like you know. So um, you know, one of my one of my main training partners is uh, obviously Ash Williams, who's who's on the EBI black belt jiu-jitsu. He's like the youngest black belt in the UK. Uh, he's on EBI. He's four zero as an amateur. Uh, Aiden James, who's represented Team UK in the IMMA. I M M A F uh, amateur tournaments, and uh, my, my, a couple of other guys, you know, like Scott Perris and Nathan Morgan, Ben Mars, them guys as well. They're they're good guys, but mostly my coach Chris as well, who puts me through these hard, these grueling sessions, you know. And um, like I said, it's a it's a tough little team. We got a, a strong little family there in in uh, in, in Swansea, and um, yeah, them guys just want to see me do well. So um, roll on November the nineteenth. A lot of people talk about UFC jitters in their debut. Do you feel like having fought for Titan FC, uh, being on UFC Fight Pass, um, do you feel like that's kind of helping you going into your debut? Because you've kind of already been on a big stage before. Yeah, you know, it's going to be, um, obviously, you know, it's, it's, going to be, it's going to be big and I, I'm going to be probably a little bit more nervous than usual. But, you know, I, I've, been, I've been nervous a lot of times before. You know, I've been so nervous before that I've actually blacked out before a fight, not remembered what happened before a fight, you know. And um, people are different. Uh, people... Some people, like I say, for example, one of my main trainers is Ben, Ben Miles. He's a guy who likes to like dance and sing before he goes out to a fight. I am the opposite to that. I'm a guy that's very... <laughs> leave me alone, um, yeah. Yes, leave me alone. I'm very angry before a fight. But, you know, I fight with a lot of emotion. People say that the um, that emotion is bad before a fight. But I do fight with a lot of emotion, you know. I I, I'm, I generally do fear for my life when I step in there, you know. That's what I do. And I, at the end of the day, if this was going back thousands of years ago, this would be to the death, you know. So, um it's either me or you, and unfortunately, it's not going to be uh, me. No. Yeah, and do you feel like uh, that your last fight against uh, Gutierrez? Do you feel like that experience? You know, you basically there was a good portion of that fight where you were basically fighting on one leg. Uh, do you feel like having gone through that is going to you know pay dividends in this fight? Just because if you're in a situation where you're injured, you know you know how to sort of over- overcome that. Yeah, it was, no, that was that was mentally tough. That was that fight was really tough, and I think for any any human being, really, that would have been tough. But um. You know, uh, I'll tell you what actually was said in the corner. You know, we, we were, um, I was, I was, I was talking to my coach Chris, and Chris said, "Oh, look, you know, I think you know, we need to call it a day here. You know, we need to call that. the fight, call the fight off." And um, I just looked at my other pad man, my my my, my other corner man, who was my pad man. He said, "Look, you know, we got ten minutes left, though. We got ten minutes left." And I remember telling my coach Chris, I said, "I said, do not, do not quit me in the corner. If I'm going to lose, I'm going to have to get knocked out or subbed or." I gotta get beaten. And I, I'm not quitting in no corner. You know what I mean? If I'm going out, I'm going out on my shield. You know. And um, I'm personally, I'm one of them fighters who would generally prefer to be knocked out rather than quit in the stool. It's just one of them things. Like I said, good years. I fought a UFC vet. I fought a guy while Watson, a UFC vet. My fight before that, I fought a guy who's now 18 and four. I fought the best guys out there and and come away the victor. You know. So I'm um, yeah, I'm happy with this fight. You know. People say, oh, what's he like? I'm. I'm you know, I am nervous. I'm very nervous, but that's the way I always am. How's the cut to bantamweight going? We're just a couple of weeks out from the fight. Yeah, like I said, um, the Gutierrez fight. This is this just drives me nuts when I think about this. Um, the Gutierrez fight. I I think I cut. I think I was about seventy two point five kilos before the um, before two weeks out. Two weeks out before the weigh-ins, uh, which is about one sixty. I think at the top of my head. Oh wow! No way. But, okay. Quite a big, big cut there, you know, and um, oh, that was obviously, like I said, because of the run and stuff. And uh, but right now I'm waking up in the morning, I'm over 150 over, so I got about 15 pounds to cut, which um, sounds like a lot, but that's 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 good for me, you know. So um, I'm not a big guy; I'm just thick set for bantamweight. And um, every time I talk to my my coach, I think up to potentially maybe going up that featherweight just for one or two fights. But uh, you know, if if I'm honest, it's um, the the cut the cut to, the cut to featherweight would be too easy if I'm honest then so I, I'm in between if the UFC decide to make a 140 then I'll be a uh, thumbs up to that but um, at the minute I know that uh, they're not planning anything like that so how's this fight ending on November 19th 
It's, that's one of them things. I'll tell you. I'll tell you two ways it will end. I'll tell you the way that he wins, and I'll tell you the way that I win. The, the way that he wins is if he he has to knock me out. He has to, you know, he has to knock me out, or maybe cast me with a sub. But but he only he has that in the first first round. I'm saying, you know, if you look at a fitness scale, I look at his fitness, look at my fitness. I think I'm the fitter guy in this in this scenario, and I can put a pace on him that that no fighter has done before. So the the way he wins is if he catches me off nice and early. But like I said, I'm very, I'm very attentive in the start. You know, I make sure nothing comes through. The way I win, I see it being like a, a stopping in like the third round when he's tired. You know, I'm gonna re- try and rest him for the first two rounds, get him on his back, try and beat him up a little bit in the third round, then try and look for that finish. Good stuff. Awesome. Well, uh, last question for you here. Uh, we just had Halloween this past week. Did you dress up for Halloween this year? I didn't dress up for Halloween. I'm, uh, <laughs> I, 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 you don't need to. No, I don't need to. No, I got these big cauliflower for the years in the side of my head. I don't need to dress up for Halloween. But uh, if I had to pick something to dress up as, maybe I would have been Deadpool. I like Deadpool. Cool. I like it. I like it. And I certainly am looking forward to this fight. UFC Fight Night 99 in Belfast, November 19th. Brett, can't thank you enough for joining me here on the program. Where can people get a hold of you on social media? And if you have any thank yous or shout outs, the floor is yours. I'm, uh, yeah, like I said, you know, thank you to the teams who, uh, who have been absolutely amazing to me. Um, like I said, my coaches, you know, they know who they are. My social media is at 36 Johns. I'm um, Brett Johns MMA on, on uh, Instagram. I'm the Pike MMA on Snapchat and uh, Brett Johns on Facebook. So, um, like I said, thank you for having spent the time to have a chat with me before the fight as Anytime. well. Jim. Thank you.